Welcome back to Men and the City. I wanted to make a quick video today for those of you that have had a difficult time. Maybe you're not feeling great about your, yourself, don't have a whole lot of confidence, you don't see a lot of meaning and purpose in your life, and you're wondering what to do about it. So I'm going to read an excerpt of a recent essay that I wrote called Western Man's Dark Night of the Soul Before Dawn. And then we're going to talk about it. Men in the city are beginning to find within themselves a new path. Western men live in a time of corruption, of isolation, of estrangement from mainstream society. A time of compression, squeezed by a system that hates them. Since the 60s, the tidal wave of feminism, the great replacement, bureaucratic emasculation, financialization, and the sexual frustration of a toxic dating marketplace has left Western men and society battered and broken. Social breakdown begins incrementally, almost imperceptibly as droplets before the downpour. Eventually, small cuts become deep lacerations that bury the self under layers of psychological scar tissue until what you have become is wholly unrecognizable from what you were. Masses of men find themselves living through a dark night of the soul crawling through glass in the emptiness of the abyss. Desperate to change their situ situation, to revive the boyish enthusiasm and optimistic vigor that once fired their libidos, men are hoping against hope for salvation. As prayers go unanswered and pleas for a release fall on apathetic ears, a masco derangement detonates and men lash out. A grim awakening sets in after years, perhaps decades, First the blue pill shades into purple, next red, until men choke on the black pill and hit rock bottom. Men give up because it's over, nothing can be done, and all is lost. It is at this point when men are reborn. A glimmer of light flashes in the darkness, a barely recognizable crevice opens in the cave, and a new hope ignites. Not all men experience a dark night of the soul. Some tragically never make it through. Only the worthy emerge from the blackness. This is what Dostoevsky meant when he said, there is only one thing that I dread, not to be worthy of my sufferings. Our suffering is not ours alone. It is a collective suffering we must endure for the sake of Western civilization's kith and kin. There is hope on the horizon, a flicker in a tunnel dimly lit by the fireworks of revolt. A clash between good and evil is enveloping the globe and the forces of good desperately need you. To ascend the spiritual heights has never been easy and it requires a dark night of the soul. Only after crashing to the base of the mountain are men forced to confront the ugliness within themselves and the world wherein they begin the arduous climb upwards. It is in the chasm that minds open to new ideas, new movements, new paths, and it is there where salvation is found. Neo-masculinity, too, is a crucible, a desperate fight to reclaim masculine power inside a sickened society disintegrating around us. To do so, we must convert the heat, the fire, the rage within us into coherent action to better our lives and reform society. Western men cannot do so alone. We need each other. We need a neo-masculine movement to empower us. We are traversing the dark night of the soul, a trial by fire, a fight against a system rigged against us. Doing so has been painful, but it has also transformed us, opened our minds, and awakened our souls to faith and tradition, as well as to a new, new path, a neo-masculinity. What I want all of you to do is sit down and imagine the following scenario. I want you to picture yourself sitting in a fancy restaurant next to a beautiful woman. You're healthy, you're fit, you're tall, you're good looking. You know, whatever it is that you want to be, you are those things. You have children, you have friends, you have family, you're well respected, you have a corporate job, you have everything. But you are also blissfully happy. You don't really know what's going on in the world and you don't care. You're only concerned about your narrow sliver, your slice of the pie. And from across that room or that table, 
I want you to picture yourself as you are today, knowing the things that you know, knowing where the world is headed. Would you trade places with that idealized man across from you who has all of the things that society says that you need? My guess, gentlemen, is that you would not trade places. You would stay exactly where you are. You would stay where you are because you know deep down that a fight is coming between good and evil. And you are needed. You are needed. Stay tuned for more, and we'll talk soon.